Uh, I want to thank you all for coming to the Great River Park, uh, a facility that uh, gets loved to death. It's a, a wonderful new facility in the city of St. Paul. We're very proud of. In a land of 10,000 plus lakes and lots of pools, uh, pool safety, water safety is incredibly important. Too many children across the country every year die or are seriously injured in an accident that occurs inside of a pool. Uh, we obviously have uh, examples right here in the state of Minnesota that are, are tragic uh, and uh, unspeakable in terms of the, uh, the sadness. Uh, we are very proud to be standing here to talk about pool safety and really talking about how we can take down some of the number of incidences that occur. Since Memorial Day, there have been 390 reported drowning or significant accidents uh, that have occurred in pools across the country. Uh, there were 188 drownings alone. Uh, obviously, we have uh, the, the sad, sad story uh, of Abby Taylor uh, that has, I think, uh, inspired many of us, and particularly Senator Klobuchar, to do better uh, by all of our children, to make sure that when they go into, the, in, into a pool, that they're protected, that they're safe, uh, that, uh, that we can reduce these accidents across the country and in the state of Minnesota. I want to thank Senator Klobuchar for her leadership on this. Uh, Inez Tenenbaum uh, uh, is with us here today with the U.S. Uh, Consumer Product Safety Commission. Uh, we have Abby's Hope that has really inspired some of the very significant uh, changes that are occurring here. And the World Water Park Association are all gathered here today. We have in the city of St. Paul, uh, as uh, former Mayor Coleman used to say, mayors have powers uh, to proclaim things. I don't know what that ex actually gets you. But we do have a proclamation that just talks about the importance of pool safety uh, and uh, across, uh, across the state of Minnesota and across the country. Whereas in the United States, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission estimates that nearly 300 children younger than five uh, drown in swimming pools and spas each year. And more than 3,200 3, that age go to hospital emergency rooms to, due to non-fatal submersion, uh, submersion injuries. Whereas an unknown number of these hospitalizations result in permanent disability, including brain damage. Whereas these deaths and injuries are preventable. And whereas the CPSC is charged with implementing and enforcing the Virginia Graham Bar Baker Pool and Sa Spa Safety Act to reduce child drownings and near drownings and entrapments in swimming pools and spas. And whereas public participation in the campaign could help spread the campaign's message to parents and families and help prevent future tragedies. Whereas the City of St. Paul supports CPSC's Pool Safety Safely campaign. Now therefore, I, Christopher Coleman, proclaim September 27, 2010 to be Pool Safely Day in the City of St. Paul. I want to thank everyone that has made this uh, such an important issue that has taken action to reduce these significant and serious injuries and deaths, and I just appreciate that. And at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Inez Tenenbaum and present her with this proclamation. Inez? Thank you, thank you. so much, Mayor. Thank you. Mayor Coleman, thank you for, so much for that warm introduction and for this beautiful proclamation. Mayor, it's an honor to be here in St. Paul, and I commend you for your leadership and advocacy for the safety of your residents and your visitors. I'm particularly pleased that you have focused on education as one of your top priorities as mayor. I'm so pleased to launch Pool Safely Day in St. Paul. This is a nationwide effort today with more than 30 events in 12 states in the District of Columbia. Our message from St. Paul to San Diego, from Minnesota to Montana, is a simple one. Swimming occurs all year long in water parks, hotels, motels, and warm weather states. Therefore, we need to protect children in and around the water all year long. Communities from coast to coast are making drowning and drain entrapment prevention a priority today. But the Consumer Product Safety Commission made this event the heart of the Pool Safely Day for two powerful reasons, to honor Abigail Taylor and to save the lives of children across Minnesota. Katie and Scott, your strength in the face of tragedy and the passion for keeping Abigail's spirit alive through the Abby's Hope Foundation is an inspiration to my agency. We thank you so much for being here and for participating today, and we want you to know that the CPSC is a supporter of Abby's Hope. 
I want all parents to know that drowning is a leading, but it is a preventable cause of death for injury, uh, death and injury among children younger than five. And drain entrapment and evisceration is a hidden and horrific hazard that we're working hard to prevent. The statistics this, from this past summer are very upsetting. Since Memorial Day weekend, the media has reported nearly 400 child drownings and near tragedies nationwide. There are nearly 190 child drownings, 200 near tragedies, and one entrapment. Here in Minnesota, the media reported the drowning of a year-old girl. Drowning is a silent killer. It happens quickly and quietly, and it can strike anyone at any time. We have come to the Great River Water Park at the Oxford Community Center, an outstanding aquatic center, to do something about these tragic statistics. Our Pool Safe, Safely public campaign is all about using and sharing the simple steps that can save a child's life. CPSC, along with great partners like Abby's Hope and the World Water Park Association, are teaching families about pool and pool operators the simple steps that save lives in public and in backyard pools. Some of these life-saving steps include knowing CPR, always watching and being within reach of children in and around the water, teaching children how to swim, and installing drain covers that are safe. These are simple steps that apply to water parks, hotels, motels, indoor community pools, as well as backyard pools. Over the summer, the CPSC released a series of high-impact public service announcements. The PSAs are available for television and radio and print media in English and in Spanish. We really encourage all of you in the media to use these PSAs. The PSA shows the importance of installing a four-foot fence, having a working pool alarm, and securing the back door that leads to the pool. This campaign is especially important for the African-American and Hispanic communities. The USA Swimming and CP CDC have determined, determined that there is a disproportionate risk of drowning for African-American and Hispanic children. According to USA Swimming, in diverse co communities, the youth drowning rate is two or three times higher than the national average. Nearly six out of 10 African-American and Hispanic children are unable to swim, and which is uh, nearly twice as many as their Caucasian counterparts. The CPSC's Pool Safely and Minority Outreach campaigns are working to make a difference and reduce pool drownings in these communities. I'd like to close my remarks by recognizing that the passage of the Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Spa Safety Act is a key reason that we are all gathered here today. Parents should know that because of this child safety law, many public pools and spas across Minnesota have installed new and safer drains. This is another safety step, and this one is being required by federal law to keep children safe. I want to restate a message I sent to public pool and spa operators when I first arrived at the CPSC last summer. If your facility is not compliant with the Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Spa Act, you should not open, and we will close you if you're not compliant. Install the right equipment and comply with the law so that you can stay open and help the kids in your community have a fun and safe place to go. Adding extra safety steps around the water can make all the difference. You can never know which safety measure will save a life, and it does. It is now my honor to have the opportunity to introduce one of our strongest champions of child safety in the United States Senate and the Congress, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar. In Minnesota, she had a reputation of being a consumer advocate that she has taken to the United States Senator. She is a leader and she is a friend. The senator was instrumental in securing passage of both the Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Spa Safety Act and the Consumer Product Safety Improvement Act. She is a true champion for protecting children and the consumers. I am so happy that she was able to join us today and so pleased to have her support as we continue to build a new and an improved CPSC. Senator Klobuchar.
Well, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Tenenbaum. I, I note that you wore the Vikings purple today uh, in celebration of our win, so we really appreciate that. Um, and it is wonderful to be here. I don't know if you know that uh, Commissioner Tenenbaum actually had a lot of bipartisan support, which you can't say about everything in the United States Senate. Right now she had the support of both of her uh, Republican senators, DeMint, as well as Graham of South Carolina when she was nominated by President Obama to this job. And so uh, we're just very pleased. She's been doing a great job at the Consumer Product Safety Commission. I also want to thank, thank Mayor Coleman uh, for hosting us uh, at this great park. I, the temperature reminds me of many visits I've had with my daughter to water parks. I'm having evocative memories. Uh, and of course, being here uh, with the Taylors uh, is such an incredible honor uh, that both Katie and Scott have shown such uh, tremendous grace and courage uh, in dealing with such a family tragedy. Uh, I have often, I'm often asked by people, uh, reporters, what's your best moment in the Senate? Because uh, I think sometimes people don't think there's that many best moments. Well, I answer that in about one second. And my best moment uh, was when I got to go to the back of the cloakroom of the United States Senate and call Scott and Katie and tell them that the Virginia Graham Baker Pool Safety Act had passed. And I am convinced that it would not have happened uh, without uh, their fortitude and their leadership. Because after Abby uh, was in uh, that tragic entrapment in that pool, they immediately got involved. And one of the reasons they got involved was because of Abby's spirit. I actually visited her uh, in the hospital right after this happened. And she literally looked at a senator, that little girl, and they said, well, what do you want? You know, most kids would say, well, I want a toy or I want to go to McDonald's. She said, I want to make sure this never happens to anyone again. And that's what they took as their inspiration. And literally, Scott would call me every week on my cell phone. And as you guys know, things take a long time in Washington. And I'd say to him, well, we just had a hearing in record speed, and this bill's been kicking around for four years. The fact that we had a hearing, well, why won't it be done next week? And then he'd call again, is it going to be done this week? Uh, and it makes a difference. He was so incredibly persistent. Uh, thankfully, uh, it looks like Abby's wish is coming the true uh, thanks to the leadership of Commissioner Tenenbaum and the Consumer Product Safety Commission, because we got that law passed, President Bush signed it into law, uh, and then that was part of the hard work. But the other part of the hard work was the enforcement and mostly the education, like you're hearing today. Uh, we do know, and again, things can go wrong, but since 2009, uh, we haven't had a child die uh, from entrapment in a pool drain, uh, which is a very good record. But we still know there are other issues with swimming pools, which is why we're here today. There are still 300 kids, as the mayor and the commissioner noted, 300 kids under the age of five who drown in swimming pools and spas every single year. On top of that, another 3,000 kids head to the hospital. And the worst part of this is we know that none of it has to happen. I'm a mom myself. I know how you can have that moment where you look away, you're talking to someone, you're reading the newspaper, um, and you don't watch for that minute. Well, sometime that minute when that kid runs out to the backyard pool um, or you don't watch because they're getting on a diving board that they shouldn't get on, that can be the minute that can be the difference uh, between life and death. And it's something that we have to remember every single day. So I would just end by, again, uh, giving my appreciation uh, to the Taylors for this. Um, Abby Taylor was a pretty special little six-year-old girl. And like all other girls, she loved to splash around in the swimming pool. So when we tell her story, uh, we don't tell it because we want to scare kids or uh, keep them from enjoying great water parks like this one. Uh, we tell it because we want to educate children and their families. We want to tell it because uh, we want our kids to know uh, that they can play in the water and not get hurt. That's what this event is about. It's also what Abby's Hope, the foundation that Scott and Katie founded, is working to promote every single day. They have never given up. They started not having ever done anything like this before. They started this foundation. Uh, they've gotten their word out, not just in Minnesota, but all over the country. Uh, and I know uh, that Abby is smiling down on us right now. I know she especially likes her mother's dragonfly shirt, because uh, Abby loved dragonflies. Um, and um, this is for her. So it's my honor uh, to introduce a woman that continues to inspire me in my work, Katie Taylor. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, Mayor Coleman, for hosting us in St. Paul. Thank you, Chairman Tannenbaum and Senator Klobuchar for your continued support for pool safety and spa safety. And for Pool Safely Day, I'd really like to thank Susan Foss from Foss Swim School for being my cohort and helping us set up a plan for Pool Safely Day and that people in the community right here in St. Paul can come here today and have tips to learn how to go to the pool safely. They can have simple steps to save lives. They can bring their children to the pool today free of charge. And Foss, Swimming, Foss Swim School is here to help educate them on how they can go to the pool and be at the pool safely. Abby's Hope Charitable Foundation was created because of Abby and because of her desire to make sure what happened to her did not happen to another child. We have worked fiercely in the last two and a half years to raise awareness of pool safety and supervision around the pools. We go out into classrooms and we educate children at a school age on what they need to do to go to the pool safely, reminding them that everyone should have in their pool bag a water watcher card. And when someone takes you to the pool, your grown up that's with you has to wear this. And we send the water watcher pledge so that they sign the pledge and agree to watch their children while they're at the pool. Active supervision is one of the first steps in keeping your kids safe at the pool. Another step would be having barriers and fences. We all know that children seem to disappear quicker than we can keep our eyes on them. But if we can, we have to rethink it. Instead of always trying to educate the kids, why don't we educate the adults? If we take the initiative and we keep their surroundings safe, making sure the pools are safe, making sure the drain covers are safe and attached and compliant with state laws as well as federal laws, we can make the pool's a safe and fun place that they should be for our families. We have worked really hard on educating. We created a program this past December to go out into the underserved populations and do a water safety class. So far this year, we've reached almost 2,000 children who would never have taken a swimming class of any type. And we've given them a basic water safety class so that they know how to enter the water, how to right themselves in the water. And this is a really important task to get, every child should know how to right themselves in the water, what they need to do to be safe around the water. We live in a world surrounded by lakes and rivers and pools. We want our kids to be safe. Today, through Pool Safely Day, we're trying to raise awareness. Pools are a year-round fun experience. I love the pool, my kids love the pool. But we need to remember that swimming is a life skill and we need to really be advocates for our children. With your help, we can continue to remain vigilant in our fight and ensure that the safety regulations in place are enforced as well as help promote the creation of new laws and regulations to make sure that all pools are structurally safe. Remember, today is Pool Safely Day. We know that accidents do happen, but when you look at the causes of most accidents, you'll find that they're actually a result of predictable and preventable occurrences. At Abby's Hope Charitable Foundation, we're working to stop those preventable accidents from hurting kids. It's just that simple. And now I'd like to introduce Rick Root from the World Water Park Association. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here today on behalf of the members of the World Water Park Association to help spread the pool safely message. My thanks to the CPSC and Chairman Tannenbaum, Senator Kolbeshar and Mayor Coleman and Katie Taylor for their leadership on this critical issue. I'd also like to thank the team here at Great River Water Park for hosting this important event. The World Water Park Association is proud to be a partner in the CPSC's Pool Safely campaign, along with Abby's Hope, the American Red Cross, the National Drowning Prevention Alliance, and other national water safety organizations. 
the CPSC's Pool Safely campaign and its national call to action with the creation of Pool Safely Day will save lives and reduce injuries and drownings across the U.S. Childhood drowning is a true public health crisis, but by embracing multiple strategies, such as those outlined in Simple Steps Save Lives, it is preventable. The adoption of these simple steps must become a national effort by families, by public health officials, by industry, and by the media. The water park industry and its thousands of aquatic professionals share an unwavering commitment to guest safety, and that commitment and their unwavering diligence have made water parks the safest place for families to play in the water. Since its inception 30 years ago, the primary focus of the World Water Park Association has been education and the establishment of operating procedures that improve the experience and, most importantly, the safety of our guests. In 2002, <clears throat> the WWA established National Water Safety Month to support that initiative and help build public awareness. Eight years later, WWA member water parks, in partnership with the National Recreation and Parks Association and the Association of Pool and Spa Professionals, continue to champion this important initiative. Being water aware is clearly vital during that summer swimming season, but perhaps more so during months of the year when people spend less time in the water. Today, community aquatic facilities and the explosive growth of indoor water park resorts, including 16 right here in Minnesota, offer a wide range of aquatic fun that can be enjoyed year round. We're pleased to support Pool Safely Day and to encourage participation in activities that help spread the Pool Safely message as we head into the fall when families take time to enjoy these facilities. Whatever the time of year, our challenge remains. We must be vigilant and do all that we can to educate parents and children to be water aware and to understand the Pool Safely message that simple steps really do save lives. Learning to swim is one simple step that families can take any time of the year. Research shows that if a child doesn't learn to swim by the time they're in third grade, they likely never will. This past June, the WWA, along with dozens of national and local partners, championed the world's largest swimming lesson event as a platform to communicate that swimming is a life-saving skill and vital part of a multi-step approach to prevent drowning. Thousands of people participated in the event at hundreds of aquatic facilities around the globe, including 34 states in the U.S. We encourage parents to take advantage of the fall and winter Learn to Swim programs at indoor aquatic facilities, from water parks to YMCAs, from, wa from community pools to swim schools and fitness clubs. Being safe in and around the water requires more than just swimming lessons. But learning to swim and the exposure to water safety messages that swimming lessons offer provide a lifelong foundation for drowning prevention. Finally, we urge everyone to remember that parents are a child's first line of defense. Take simple steps to pool safely, and remember, vigilance is crucial. Swimming is one of life's great joys. Let's keep it that way. Please, pool safely today and every day. Thank you.